A human that doesn't meditate is somewhat like a car that never drives. I think that meditation is innate to every human being because ultimately the human aspect of our identity is much like the identity that we take in in a dream at night, in a, in a sense. This doesn't mean that our human identity is meaningless or of relatively little value. It is of exquisite value. But merely to say that our core identity is, is quite at home in the dimension that we find ourselves in, in meditation. So this is very much within your nature. Everyone inside themselves has a compass. When you are performing a meditation and you know that you are making progress, you know that. And, uh, there's just something in you that, that knows that. You don't have to be told. And this is this is why humans are so intrinsically good at meditation. There's nothing that no one needs to tell you uh, how, how to make that progress. So in, in a sense, making this video is, is a bit paradoxical, but there are some pointers that can help you uh, very much along the way. I want to help you meditate the way you will for the rest of your life. And so the, medita the meditation that I show you here will be not just, not just for stress relief, not just for relaxation. It's not, it's not just some superficial practice. This is a meditation that can be expanded and adapted um, to any individual and has the potential to provide the meditator with non-dual revelation. So probably most, if not all, of my viewers are interested or have or are familiar with the idea of non-duality. That seems to be the uh, trendy word that uh, we use in discourse these days. And um, so, um, so I'll, I'll put it like that. So, uh, another word, another way to put it would be um, oneness. The meditation has the, and including this meditation, has the possibility of uh, propelling a person into uh, a perception of a perception and experience uh, of oneness. And that has, uh, that can dramatically change a person's life. Um, for the better, mostly, because it's, it's like, it's sort of like coming home, you know, so it's, uh, so you need to be comfortable with transformation, um, and you have to be open to the possibility of that. If you are 
interested in non-dual revelation. You need to be okay with transformation. So uh, coming in, uh, so with with those caveats in mind, this is you know something of pursuit. So um, to begin with uh, teaching you this meditation, we can get into the practical aspects first. So this is a purely non-devotional practice. This has no connection to religion in any way, shape, or form. This is not a worship practice. This is not, it does not involve any deities. It does not involve anything like that. This meditation is purely only a, a means of, it's a means of revelation and connecting uh, the mind and the emotion, the emotional field and the body together and to provide the meditator with insight and a number of different benefits. And that's all it is. So again, it's not devotional. It's not religious in, in any way at all. And I prefer that. So <clears throat> ultimately, when it comes to meditation, the less complex you make it, the better. And this is where beginners have a lot of trouble, is they, they overcomplicate it a lot. And that is in large part due to the teaching. So if a beginner is starting from scratch, all they have to go on is what they're told or what they're taught about the practice. And so they don't have much ability to adapt it to themselves, but that may come, but that comes over time. And, um, so, but still, as I said before, everyone has some, has natural ability. So, and it's just a matter of letting that intuition take over on the practical side, um, even before beginning the meditation, you can have some considerations. Stretching can be a valuable thing to do prior to a meditation because it, it loosens up the muscles, it releases tension, and that can certainly help you relax in meditation and Especially if you've had, um, if you're particularly stressed, um, uh, yeah, there can be there can be a lot of built up of resistance inside the body. So exercise and stretching, um, mainly stretching, but um, again, neither of these are neither of these are prerequisites. As far as postures, um, I mean, you can you can meditate virtually anywhere and virtually in any posture. Um, there are even walking meditations, um, but this is but this is not going to be. We're not going to explore that in in this video. We're going to explore more of a. Uh, it's, it's a sitting meditation, something that you would practice once or twice a day, every day, or, um, or at least whenever uh, the inclination arises. So seating positions or postures, um, it, uh, if you're in it for the long haul, like I am, um, it's, it can be worth it to invest in some seating. So um, 
there are meditation supply stores um, that can provide you with um, with mats and pads and cushions and those are those can be very valuable especially especially if you have hard floors at home then it might not be so comfortable just to sit flat against um, against a hard floor um, so they do provide comfort and the cushions there are other kinds of seatings other than uh, cushions but um, I do prefer cushions they provide support and balance and that's actually important uh, a lot of people are probably familiar with the lotus position, which few people are flexible enough to do. But if you are, it's, it is ideal. Um, and that's simply because um, in the lotus position, you're, um, you become like a tripod, and so you get exquisite balance. And balance is um, uh, really does help. It supports the body, and then that supports uh, it supports the mind in a sense, because you're not um, you're not slouching, you're not fidgeting. Um, it takes very little energy to support yourself in that position. But ultimately, it doesn't matter because you can meditate in any position. So don't put too much emphasis on that. Um, I, uh, having a mat and a cushion, I prefer to use those. And uh, uh, I like the Siza visit, uh, position very well um, because that provides quite a lot of support as well. Um, if you find yourself um, getting tingling or discomfort at any time, you know, just move to a different position. And, and that's about it as far as positions. Uh, very few of the recommendations here are, um, well, not really any of them are requirements. So again, I just repeat that because it's, again, don't overcomplicate it because it doesn't need to be. So the meditation itself <clears throat> is a mantra meditation. And some people might be a little bit confused. Um, depending on what their understanding of a mantra is. In a meditation like this one, a mantra is simply a sound. And it's very short, um, preferably no more than a couple syllables, but one is, prop is ideal. And um, so the point of the mantra of, of the sound is to uh, use it as a focus point um, as you ride the crest of the rolling wave, the meditation. And uh, so once you become the wave, then the purpose of the mantra is fulfilled. And as you as you practice more and more with your meditation, the you'll begin to the mantra will fall away on its own. It's not there to you don't worship the mantra. It isn't something of any devotional significance. It's a sound. So it's it's a vehicle. And once you no longer need the vehicle, you, you discard it. And so, why a mantra meditation? Um, for one reason or another that I don't think anyone can quite tell you, mantra meditations are 
uh, very effective. They are used in, for instance, the Transcendental Meditation Technique, which is um, probably the most uh, probably the most popular um, I'm not sure you'd, you'd say commercialized but um, it's definitely it's a practice that is taught um, to thousands and thousands of people it's been around for you know, decades and uh, and it does have a lot of scientific backing at least as far as the the benefits. Um, but mantra meditations, they are effective. And um, for the reasons that I described is that using that vehicle to to focus is is very effective. And um, and so that's and so that's the method that I use. You can use you can use any mantra, but when you choose one, stick with it. Um, it should be, um, it shouldn't be a word that has meaning to you, um, because that would defeat the purpose of it being a vehicle. If it has meaning that can potentially draw you into, uh, thinking patterns, etc. We're only using it as a vehicle. So it should be, you know, a nonsense word, something simple, something that does not draw you into any pattern of thinking. And so I, I'm not going to tell you what it should be, but something short, something simple, and something that doesn't have any intrinsic meaning to you specifically. And so that's, that's ideal. <clears throat> and the practice really is quite simple. It's very easy and all you really need to do is get seated become comfortable and just begin observing your thoughts and feel everything that is in the body including your breath you're just feeling Thoughts are not a barrier whatsoever, so that doesn't matter. You're just feeling everything. And just wind down. And when you're ready, close your eyes. You can open them for a little bit. And just as the thoughts arise when you close your eyes, allow the mantra to come in. And just repeat the mantra in whatever cadence, whatever rhythm is most natural to you. And just repeat it. And as you do, listen and feel. Listen and feel the mantra 
as it is manifested, as it is created inside you. Repeat the mantra and listen to it as it arises and as it disappears in the same instance and repeat it. Thoughts may come in, and it's not a problem. If you wander and get distracted from the mantra, just return to it. Thoughts are not a problem. They're not a barrier. Return to the mantra. As long as you need the mantra, come back to it. Continue to listen. In the same way you open your palms as you relax your body, use the same kind of effort when you allow everything that is in your mental space to be. In time, every thought will be your mantra. That is to say, every thought will be the vehicle of your awakening. And therefore the mantra won't matter.
when you're very deep in your meditation, your breath may periodically or almost completely cease. Your sense of hearing will merge with each of your other sense perceptions into a single perception. As you approach the end of the meditation, you can begin to move your arms and legs. Open your eyes a few times. Just blink a few times, allow a little bit of light in at a time. Just give yourself a few minutes to readjust. It's important to give yourself a few minutes as you end your meditation to come back to planet Earth, so to speak. And you can do this for as long as you need, 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes. You may wish to go as long as an hour sometimes. I generally wouldn't recommend uh, any more than that. Although you could on special occasions um, if you feel that it's uh, that uh, that it's something you really need or want to do, <clears throat> but generally, uh, anywhere between ten to thirty minutes, once or twice a day is is a good place to start, or a good place to be rather. It's generally best to save eating for um, after meditations because um, 
if you meditate on a full stomach, that can um, preoccupy your body, so to speak. It's not essential, um, but um, if you're meditating on an empty stomach, then generally, um, generally I find, and a lot of other people have found, that um, it's more it's more productive, so to speak. So that's something to keep in mind. But certainly, it's like all of the other things um, that I've mentioned. It's not a requirement. Over time, you can adapt this meditation. And that really is the intention, is over time, you make it your own. Because you have your own internal compass. With assurance and with the belief that you can reach it, the non-dual revelation is yours whenever you want. A lot of people struggle with uh, non-duality because they believe that it's out of their reach. But it doesn't have to be. I always, in my videos, I, I always encourage meditation because it's the practical experience that, that really matters. Revelation is an experience and meditation has the power to potentiate radical non-dual experiences. And so that's why I encourage it. It's taken me a long time to make this video because um, I wanted to get it right. Although I'm sure I've made some mistakes along the way, but um, uh, But yeah, here it is. But ultimately, it's up to you because you are the master. And I do help uh, this video has provided some, some meaningful pointers and But at some point, you'll have to let go of it, too, if you're using it as, as a tool. And that's where it happens. It's all about you, isn't it? It always has been.